Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Math. This spring and fall we're hosting a whole brand new series of workshops for teachers for math, science, English, and history. You should check out these workshops. We're going to be holding them in Massachusetts, in Florida, in New York, in California. Check them out. I'm sure you'll find them very helpful. Take care. Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Math. Today we're going to do a new problem as part of the Go Math 2015 teacher workshop series. So let's take a look at number 17. Um, as you scan over it, I want you to notice information that's located in the high, middle, and low region of the problem. You can always, whenever you can always get information from these different regions, and you should start training your brain to start looking at information at the high, middle, and low. For example, just by looking at the low section, this is your answer options. You can see that this is uh, the answer choices are in degrees Celsius, so it involves temperature. Uh, also notice that some of the temperatures are negative values, and some of them are positive values. So this is another example of a fork. If you know that it's going to be positive, you could eliminate two of the choices right away, or vice versa. And that's going to be really essential that you see these forks so that you can eliminate choices that don't make sense. Um, we'll get back to how you could eliminate two of these right away. Uh, let's look at some other information. Well, we have the table here. Sometimes they give you a diagram. Sometimes they give you a picture. Um, this one definitely here is a, a table. So let's take a look at the information here. We see that there's the five days of the week, the weekdays, and uh, they have different temperatures. Sometimes when you see something like this, it could be a question involving like, what is the average temperature over five days, since there's five data points here? Um, or they could be asking you a question on uh, what is the range of temperatures between the lowest and highest point? Um, and that, that means we'd find the difference between the lowest and highest point. I'm just looking at this picture and I'm sort of getting that, just those ideas are popping into my head. And I think that's okay to look at the picture real quick, look at the answers real quick, and sort of um, um, get some ideas of what it could be. All right, it kind of warms up your brain a little bit to the options. Now I'm going to read over the question, and uh, hopefully um, my analysis of the problem will be, will be reinforced in the question itself. So let's take a look and read this over. It says, uh, as part of a unit on weather, students recorded the outdoor temperature at 8 a.m. for five mornings. What was the difference between the week's highest and lowest morning temperatures? Wow, we, we, we predicted that just by looking at this information here. I mean, we said it could either be an average problem or a range problem with uh, the lowest and highest temperatures. This is because a lot of questions with a similar structure ask those very two questions. So if, you, if you're familiar with the structure of these questions, then you're almost going to be ready for the questions before you even see them. All right, so how am I going to go about finding the, the range here or the, the, the difference between the the highest and lowest morning temperatures. First thing I want you to do, just as, as good practice, is I want you to organize these five data points, these five temperatures, from least to greatest. And I'm going to do that by writing out five spaces here. I'm going to put in the first one the, the least, the lowest degrees. It's really cold on uh, Friday, but I'm going to just not worry about the order of the days, and I'm just going to order them from the, from the coldest to the warmest days. I'll put the 13 degrees. I was also at negative 13 degrees. Very cold day. Then we have our, our 4 degrees Celsius, our, 12, our 7 degrees Celsius, and we have our um, 12 degrees Celsius. Now, what is the range between these points here? Well, you could do one way. You could say you could make it a subtraction problem. Be like, what is 12 minus a minus 15? Now, when you're, when you're, and I could, I could rewrite that as uh, 12 minus a minus 15 like this, and when you're at minusing a, a negative number, that's like adding it. So that would be like 12 plus 15, and that'd get you to uh, 27 degrees. That's one way of thinking about it. Here's another way of thinking about it. Make a number line with zero there, and put 12 as one of the points, 12 degrees Celsius on one of the points on the data on the on the number line and then we have a negative 15 degrees Celsius 
And when it's talking about the range, it's talking about this distance here. So you want to think about from, from negative 15 degrees Celsius to zero is 15 degrees. And from 12 degrees Celsius to zero is another 12 degrees. So the total distance from here to here, not worrying about this is negative or this is positive, but the total range of temperatures is, again, 27 degrees. And the answer is E here. Now, earlier on I said, uh, you know, if you can eliminate some of these choices, um, go for it as soon as, you, as soon as possible. Now, if I know that it involves a range, I mean the distance from the lowest to the highest temperature, it's not going to be, uh, you're not going to get a negative range. You're always going to get a positive range because it doesn't take into account that some of the values are negative. It's just looking for the amount of degrees uh, Celsius between the lowest and highest point. So you could have automatically eliminated these before you began. You could just cross those off right away. And this is, um, this is going to help you increase the probability of you getting the correct answer. Uh, it's going to prevent you from making a careless mistake. Like, like Let's say you you're, you're doing this real quick and you, and you have negative 15 and, and you add a 12 to it and you set it up wrong, you could get an answer of negative 3. Or, uh, and that's not something that you want to happen. So you want to make sure you, under, you understand that uh, these aren't even going to be options because you're not going to get a negative value for a range. And so that way, those are not even on the table. Okay? All right, team, this is a nice problem. You could definitely make this problem harder. And you're going to see, as you go along, much harder problems. So just uh, use this one to study. And then uh, as we get into more of the more advanced math for the middle school and high school exams, you'll definitely see much harder uh, um, examples that uh, build off this. Okay, team, this is Chris Abraham from GoMath. Have a wonderful day. Take care.